Do you know there are certain banking answers that you should know to be successful in the ATM industry? Stay to the end of the video and I'm going to share with you these banking tips and tricks. Hi, I'm Phil from PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, and I help hundreds of aspiring ATM business owners go from zero ATMs to ATM Business Pro in as little as 30 days. I always remember here at PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. All right, so we're doing this video. Mr. Kaplan asked a question in one of the chats and he said, look, I have a bunch of ATMs and I have a specific bank account for each ATM. That's the way I've done it. That's the way I've always done it. Is there a better way to do it? So the answer to that is yes. So we make this video in honor of that question to help you guys in the community. He must have been taught to open up a bank account for each ATM. And in fact, sometimes I have even seen that the banks want an ATM per or a business account per ATM. Maybe they're trying to open up mass accounts. Maybe they're trying to make more fees. I don't know. We don't need to do that in the ATM industry. We can open up just one Vault Cash account or all our ATMs. So without further ado, I'm going to give you the top five ways of banking tips and tricks for the ATM industry. So point number one, we just open up again. We're going to go back to the three bank accounts, one for your general checking account, one for your Vault Cash, one for your surcharge. That's all you need in this ATM industry. You don't have to open up one account for each ATM. And then some people say, well, how many transactions are going to have 10, 15 ATMs? Am I going to get 10, 15 deposits every location for every ATM? And is that going to put me over a threshold? I got a 50 transaction limit on my account. I got a hundred transaction on my account. How, do I have to buy an extra block? How much is this going to cost? So you're only going to have one deposit per day per your whole route. So it doesn't matter if you have five ATMs, 20 ATMs, 100 ATMs. So you're going to get one deposit no matter how many ATMs you got. Number two, daily reconcile. So when you're in the ATM business and I talk about this a lot, it's one of my big things because I want to know where all my money's at and you should too. When you have one ATM, you're the only person filling it, loading it, it's not a big deal. You start getting two, three, four, and all of a sudden you might have somebody helping you fill the ATMs. You need to know where your money's at at all time. That's why I talk about the daily reconciliation. This is, you should think about where your money is. Most of the time, your money is one of five spots. If you're smaller, you probably only got four spots it is. But when you get bigger, you're gonna have five spots. So what are those five spots, Phil? Those five spots are in the ATM. You're gonna have money in the ATM. Number two is unreconciliation vault cash. So what is that? Well, our cutoff on, depending on who your processor is, could be anywhere from two to seven o'clock. If you're with PAI, seven o'clock central, eight o'clock Eastern, that means the money doesn't cut over and the business day is at central time of seven, then the money cuts over. So all the money that's taken out before seven o'clock goes into a holding account. That's uh, unrecognized vault cash account. So it's not, into your account it's not in the atm it's in a holding account okay if you're with switch commerce it's two o'clock central and cds is as i believe is the same we don't have any cds i never was a cds guy but i believe it's still the same time two o'clock so all the money that's taken out before two o'clock the cutover goes into a holding account and then at two o'clock goes into your business bank account now you guys won't see that into your account until when the banks recognize that that cash is there, even though it's there, they won't recognize it until somewhere between four and 6 a.m. At that time, they'll recognize it. So that's the second part. Then you're gonna, then you have what's the money in your shop safe or at your home, wherever you're keeping the money. And then if you have any guys, you will also have another another little department. Where you, you know, maybe if you gave somebody, let's say your brother's holding money or something like that, those are gonna be your four buckets that money could be in. So you gotta take all that money together, put it together and come up with your par value, whatever your par value, if it's 10,000, 100,000 million, whatever it is, it should add up to that every single day. And that's how you reconcile. So if you're thinking about starting your own ATM business, but didn't know how, so stay to the end of the video and I will share with you our checklist on how to start an ATM business the right way, even if you have zero experience in business. In this checklist, I'll share with you the five things you need to start your profitable ATM business so you can build a passive income source for your family. You'll have a clear roadmap towards ATM business success so you can earn between $250 and $1,500 of passive income every single month. 
All right, let's get back to the video. Lesson three is the cash swap. Now this is a big, this is a proponent of the way we do business. This is what I believe in. Others do not, hardly anybody does not. So I just wanna share with you. Most of the people who are in the ATM business, they do what we call cash ads. What's a cash ad, Phil? Cash ad is I look in the ATM, I notice that there's $500 in it, I'm gonna take 2,000, I'm gonna put it in, and I'm just gonna hit add, and then it's program. now there's 1,500 or $2,500 in the ATM. That's a cash ad. I'm not a proponent of that. What I'm a proponent of is the cash swap, which means we go to the ATM, we take the $500 out of the ATM, we bring it up to our power value, let's say it's three or $5,000, we put $5,000 in, we program the new money into the ATM, and now we have a $5,000, what I call power value. And we do that every time. This ensures that we get all the money back and we count it. A lot of times, you guys, especially new in the game, what happens is you'll go and you'll add, let's say 2,000, you go and reject, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, you don't pay attention and then you take those 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 bills out of reject and you look at it and you say oh well here's four four out four bills in the reject but the receipt says there's only two so i'm just going to put in two more i'm going to program two more in. and the truth be told is that's one of the challenges with the atm business the reject isn't necessarily calculated right sometimes it puts two into the, into the reject sometimes it puts four sometimes it calculates two sometimes it puts four calculates zero it's never exact science it's never right but if you look online and it says there's $500 in the ATM, that's 500. It could be in the reject, it could be in the cassette. So together, it's $500 in it. So that's why we always eliminate all that challenge. We take the ATM money out, we put the new ATM in, we count that, and it always matches against the receipts of the ATM print. This way it ensures that you are balancing every time you load the ATM because now you're bringing that back to your home office, you verify those funds, and then you start fresh every time. So point number four is projected unsettled vault cash. That's what I was talking about before. So what is projected on Switch, they, they changed that. We had them change the name. It's called projected unsettled vault cash. What that is, is every time somebody takes money out, it goes into a holding account called unsettled vault cash, okay? but most companies, CDS does this, Switch doesn't do this, and neither does PI. They hold that last transaction. So it's very hard to get an accurate amount of what your what your money is because they're holding that account. But with Switch Commerce, they what they put it, they change the name and it's called projective unsettled vault cash. That'll actually forecast what they're taking out. So when somebody takes out money, then it's, it, it's projected and it goes in your unsettled vault cash to give you that even par value so you can reconcile down to the 20, down to the 10, down to the five every single time. So if you're not using that projective unsettled vault cash, at least with Switch and PAI has a different name for it, it used to be just unsettled vault cash, then you can reconcile down to the penny. You'll know exactly how much money you have at all times. And this is helpful because if you decide, hey, I'm gonna go on vacation, I got my brother-in-law doing it, I got my sister, I got somebody else doing it, now you can have keep track of it. Or, you know what, you realize, you know what, I, I don't understand what's going on, Phil. I had $2,000 in ATM, I've been adding two, 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 and now, you know, it's, it's, it looks like the ATM's short. It's not necessarily short. We go back to point number three, and one of the challenges was, is that every time there was money in the reject, sometimes you were adding, sometimes there was too much, sometimes too little, and you weren't quite doing it and you weren't counting the money as you did that. So that's why we always bring that money back, like we talked about in point number three, and now you know how to get the full scope by projective unsettled vault cash. And point number five, this is another way that you wanna make sure that you do your ATMs exactly the same every time. We always talk about if you're, if you're loading an Alice Shosun or a Gen Mega, this, this is the way you do it. Every time you go to the day total, first thing you do, you do day total. That'll count from the last time you were at the ATM to this time. Basically, you like a register, you, it's pay period to pay period. So you do day total. It'll tell you how many transactions you did, how much money it was expense. Then what we do is we do a cassette total. That'll zero out your ATM. All right, now let's say we're, we're taking, we're putting $5,000 in, 250 bills. We push in 250, we do add cash. Now my my fourth step is we're gonna do cassette, trial cassette total. That'll let the ATM know how much money is in the ATM. And then we do a trial day total. That'll let the, 
that'll let the processor know how much money is in the ATM. So we do that same step over and over and over again. Now on PAI, every time you do a day total, it cuts it over. So it'll automatically, their cutoff time is seven o'clock, but if you're loading ATMs and you do that day total, that'll do a cutover right then and there. So if you're loading at 11 o'clock in the morning, then that, that'll cut over right, right away because it's forcing the money to move into your bank account a little bit earlier than seven o'clock. So if you're interested in starting your own ATM business, I wanna invite you to our free checklist entitled ATM Business Passive Income Checklist. The five things you need to start a profitable ATM business, where I'll share with you the five things you need to start a profitable ATM business so you can start earning passive income, make more money and spend more time for your family. So if you're excited about this opportunity, click the link below and start your ATM journey today. Remember, this is Phil from PDQ Merchant Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page, where we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. Thank you guys very much.